cost because you referenced Mr. Swan's story about a farmer who was lacking 60 workers. 60 workers. Now that farmer, and I don't recall his testimony exactly, but it seemed to be to harvest a crop that was coming in here shortly. Yes. So he would fall under the H-2A program for harvesting crops like that. That that is correct. So he so that farmer would have the option to use the H two A problem program, which is unlimited in number of people, because this was as Mr. Swan, as I recall him presenting it, was this is a problem with seasonal labor. Um, he's had people that have come up from Florida before. Um, things have happened in Florida. The environment in Pennsylvania, which is an anti illegal immigrant environment, um, based on the work of many of us. Try, hoping to make sure that sign stays up, that we are not for illegal immigrants here in Pennsylvania. Um, but it seems like he would be able to address his problem with the H-2A. Well, I, I would argue no. And, and the reason I would say no is because the H-2A program is a bureaucratic and regulatory nightmare for farmers to try to use. And I, I, I have a whole series of examples I could give you. But let me, let me speak specifically to this issue. Gary Swan did mention a farmer who's, who's 60 workers short and he's trying to get ready for the harvest. If you're 60 workers short and you've got, let's say you're, let's say you're growing apples, you've got fruit on the tree, uh, the program from the time you apply to the time you're actually going to get workers is going to take four to six months to go through that system. Your fruit will rot before you can get your workers. Doesn't That's not going to cut it for agriculture. And, and the point that I made with Mr. Swan was my grandfather was a farmer and, and I grew up. You know, my job before the military in between my senior year of high school where I had a few months to fill in and going active duty in the U.S. Army was on as a hired hand on a farm. So I'm very familiar with farm work, very familiar with the risks that farmers take. And in fact, the farmer that I worked for was, in, was a pilot, um, having served in the Air National Guard, had the ability to make a six-figure income easily as a pilot at that time when pilots were still um, making good money before the airlines industry shifted so much on them. Um, but he chose to pursue farming because, and he told me he'd be out of it if he wasn't making much more money within the next five years of his business plan. And he was a very good businessman, just as my grandfather was, who raised his family on a farm income. But part of being a business person and a good business person is forecasting your labor needs and having alternative plans. So, you know, I mean, it's not that we're criticizing where the labor market's at, but that we're trying to recognize that, you know, part of a business plan is having labor. And if you're depending on people to travel up from Florida, and something could happen. There could be a hurricane. There could be a tornado. Their van could break down. It could be part of that van that had the 19 people stopped on a turnpike that had a bunch of illegals in it. Well, to, to speak to that, there is not enough labor in agriculture. Uh, if there was enough, we wouldn't have uh, fruit and vegetables rotting in, in fields where it's supposed to be harvested. It's very simple. We have a situation with, uh, with, with members in Lancaster County who have told me they have gone out and tried to recruit Amish and Mennonites to come and, and help them harvest their crops and they can't find any or, or, or they can only find one or two. I mean, they're busy harvesting their own crops. Um, there, there is not enough American workers for these jobs and that's nationally. And I mentioned California. What you're seeing there now, 35,000 people they were short in the Imperial Valley this year to try to harvest the winter lettuce crop. 35,000. Now, what we see typically with California trends is they work their way across the country. That's California now. Five years from now, that's us. 